Are there any statements? The member for Kuyong in continuation. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. As I was saying yesterday in the debate, uh, the 10th anniversary of the Bali bombings is something that we should all commemorate. And through the initiatives of both people on both sides of this House, we have done so much to stamp out terrorism, both at home and abroad, and ensure that we never see a replication of those events in Bali. As I said, one of the benefits, one of the small rays of light that came out of the tragedy in October um, 2002 was the higher degree of cooperation between Indonesia and Australia. We are not just neighbours, but we are friends and we are partners in the fight against terrorism. And Cecilio Bang Bang Yudiono, who was the security minister for Indonesia at that time, and later to become the president of Indonesia from 2004, and he had got a second term, so he will be there to 2014, has worked with successive Australian governments in an effort to stamp out terrorism. And I wanted to share with you a quote from Cecilio Bang Bang Yudiono, president of Indonesia. And he said, the Bali bombings created a set of critical chain reactions. The public debate over whether terrorism was real or imagined threat to Indonesia was laid to rest. We recognise that freedom, democracy and tolerance cannot be taken for granted. The entire nation galvanised to defend freedom, democracy and tolerance. Internationally, Indonesia became a key player in the fight against terrorism. Indonesia also became an active proponent of interfaith cooperation. The Bali attack was also a turning point in relations between Indonesia and Australia. Our relations with Australia suffered challenges brought forth by events in East Timor. It produced a compelling reason for Jakarta and in Canberra to explore new ways of cooperation in a world haunted by new unfamiliar threats. The Bali bombings cemented an emotional connection between Indonesia and Australia, a connection that grew stronger following the tsunami tragedy in Aceh and Nias and the development of the Comprehensive Partnership and Lombok Treaty. As we remember 10 years since the Bali bombings, our thoughts are with those who have endured the terrible loss of their loved ones. That, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, was Cecilio Bang Bang Udiono, the President of Indonesia, who put it so succinctly that in the days, the weeks, the months and the years after the tragedy of the Bali bombings, our two countries have come together in a way that is unprecedented to fight a common enemy. And the fact that Indonesia looked within itself and saw the radical elements of Islam, the Northern Tops, the Muklas, the Samudras, the Abu Bakr Bashirs of this world, who conspired to kill 88 innocent Australians and 202 people representing countries as diverse as the Europeans and the Americans and other countries in our region. That's what they did. They ruined the innocence of hundreds of Australians and many others around the world. But they do not have, and they have not had, the last say. The people who have had la the last say are the survivors, are the families of the victims who have committed to go forward with courage from this day and to ensure that the memories of those who lost their lives on those tragic, that tragic night in October 2002 were not lost in vain. And we, both in the time of the Howard government and in the coalition since then, with our colleagues across the political divide, we have worked in a considered and a concerted manner to tackle terrorism at its source to fund our law enforcement agencies to do better at the cutting edge of the fight against terrorism. So, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, as we look back on those tragic events, we can say that as a result 
of what happened in the nightclub district of Bali in 2002. We have bonded together and we have made a difference to ensure that the world is a safer place for Australians and our other friends in the world.